Running shellcode from within Bash doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. It's not all that practical and there's no real reason that you need to do it. I'll be the first to admit that. But the fact that you can is kind of cool. So if anything, hey, I thought I would make this small little video to showcase and play with and tinker with how we could run shellcode, like, you know, the op codes that you would run in like binary exploitation to fire off some exploit within Bash just to see how it works and have a little bit of fun. So with that, let's get to it. Before we dive into the video, here's a quick note from today's sponsor. FlexTrack is the premier cybersecurity reporting and collaboration platform that makes penetration testers, red teamers, and cybersecurity teams more efficient, effective, and proactive. With FlexTrack, you can eliminate the dull and boring drudgery of report writing, so you can focus on what's really important. Hacking, the engagement, the assessment, and the campaign. And it's not just for offense. FlexTrack is a collaboration portal between both red and blue teams to facilitate effective purple teaming and faster remediation. While coordinating between multiple team members, you easily aggregate findings, pull in reusable content from write-up databases and content libraries, and track and measure progress in real time. You can import assets from common CSV files, Nmap, Nessus, and many of your other favorite tools. FlexTrack boasts 25 plus integrations, and that list is always growing. You can do even more with FlexTrack's runbooks, with scripts mapped to the Myra attack framework or plans from Atomic Red Team and Scythe, or assessments built off of the CIS controls and benchmarks. And of course, show the impact with FlexTrack's analytics and visualizations. Customize your reports with your team's logo and details, and with a single click, export your report and send it off to the client. Spend more time hacking and less time reporting. Learn how you can boost your team's efficiency by 30% and cut reporting time by up to 65% with FlexTrack. Seriously, check them out. I have great colleagues and peers that use PlexTrack every day for reporting. Sign up for a demo and claim your free month of PlexTrack right now at https jh.io slash PlexTrack. Huge thanks to PlexTrack for sponsoring this video. I'm going to be operating inside of my Kali Linux virtual machine here as just my playground, as just my workbench. But honestly, I got this idea and I just learned a little bit about it from this tweet that I saw online. It said you can run your shell code directly from Bash. And it gives us the syntax here where we use DD with some output file of proc, uh, you know, that proc location, the file system where you can do weird voodoo ninja magic with like running processes on Linux, and then dollar sign dollar sign to denote the current process ID for like what you're actually running in. I believe that's what that is. Let's go find out. Uh, here I'll fire up a terminal, and if I just simply echo dollar sign dollar sign, I get 3668. Now if I go ahead and run PS aux and then grep for that, looks like that is uh, well, that's my Z shell right there for my process ID. You can see it way at the end. We take a block size of one as an argument to DD. We seek to some cut delimiter with spaces uh, up to field nine, redirected or read in from the syscall. And then we do some more input based off of a command substitution portion, really, or just getting the output as we decode the output of base 64. And then we do that. So that's kind of wild. That's kind of crazy, right? But I want to see if we can do it. Uh, being able to do this and just slap memory into our current running process probably requires root privileges and permissions, though. I'll be the first to admit that just as well. So you can't really do this from a low privilege Joe Schmo, uh, but let's try this. I'm going to fire up a terminal with control alt T on my keyboard, and I'll go ahead and use MSF Venom, you know, that command line utility to generate payloads or shell code from the Metasploit framework. And without any options, without any parameters, it just gives us the help output here. And we'll need to specify the payload that we want to use. I believe I can just use like Linux exec to run a command, and then we'll pass in arguments for the parameters that we want to use here. We really ultimately want to end up being able to just get the raw shellcode bytes because we will base64 encode them here. So let's use MSF Venom tack P, and I believe it's Linux tack exec and I can specify all caps CMD as a command to run. And we could run, honestly, whatever you want here. Like, hey, you could use the usual, the classic, the old echo, please subscribe. Uh, let's try to use wall so that we can end up 
kind of blasting this out and displaying it to all terminals. Uh, and I'll just wall pwned. Let's see, fingers crossed, if this thing will work. Uh, I always forget the payloads and I might get that name wrong, um, but fingers crossed. Will MSF Venom spit this out for us? No. And oh, okay, I just needed to specify the uh, X64 or the architecture to go ahead and track down that payload. And there we go, we have our raw bytes here to go ahead and use bin sh and then call or execute and run the command wall pwned. Now, let me go ahead and base64 encode that. So I'll run that same command, just hitting the up arrow on my keyboard and pipe it to base64. I'll use tack W0 as the argument there, so there aren't any new lines. It doesn't try to, you know, column it in width here. Uh, that way we can just get this slapped out onto the screen. And there we go. There is our payload. I'll go ahead and copy this and fingers crossed. I'm gonna save this to be honest. I'll just open up a sublime text window. And with sublime text open, I'll just go ahead and paste this in here. So I've got it saved and ready for us. And now let's see if we can play with this syntax. Let me see if I can try and run shellcode directly from bash. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to move this screen so we don't have that in the background. And I'll bring my terminal way over to the left here and I'll also go ahead and I don't know we can we can probably bring that to the top here let's grab this down here and now let's see if I can open up another terminal that might be able to see the wall command output so uh, if we get this thing to detonate let me paste in and I'll, I'll do this within sublime text so I can actually you know play with it here let me turn off word wrap or turn on word wrap so I can see this here. And let's modify the base64 that we want to supply and use the base64 that we've already kind of generated with MSF Venom. Now, I can just slap that in and fingers crossed, we could run this thing. Obviously, if I try this as the low privilege user Kali, it's not gonna work. It just dies, it, it, it killed my shell. So let's go try to do that one more time, but I will escalate my privileges here by just doing some simple pseudo bash, entering my password for Kali. And now let's try that one more time. I'll paste this in and cross our fingers here. Did it work? I don't know. Not seeing the wall output yet. Um, so I'm gonna assume, oh, whoa. That then got the broadcast message of pwned. I had to hit enter. Why did I have to hit enter? Did I have to hit enter? and it killed that shell. Let me do that one more time. If I just hit any key, like I hit the letter A and that blasts out, but it didn't do that to all terminals. Like it, I didn't see the wall over here. Is it just because it's in Kali? Uh, well, obviously, hey, this is still kind of running, right? We could change this MSF Venom syntax. Let's build out another payload here and I'll maximize this. So we could MSF Venom tack P. We were using Linux x64 exec command could be like ID and redirect that output to a temp security pwn dot text. How about that? Of course, we will base64 tack W zero that so we can grab that output. I'll generate that and there we go. Now we have a new base64 encoded shellcode command, uh, and we'll slap that in as the syntax here. There we go. Now we have that command that we might be able to run. And let me go ahead and check if temp security pwn dot text exists right now. It does not. And honestly, we could do that in the other terminal or just run the other command from the other terminal because that way we can validate that this will work for us. So I'm gonna hit enter here and it should have executed, but if I check this one more time, it still has not been created. But once I hit enter and this thing triggers, you see I exit out of my shell and now it exists. Now that has executed. So that's pretty wild and kind of interesting, right? If I go ahead and cat out that temp security pwn, it's running as root because of course that shell code ran as root as that how it is how we invoked it. Now, let me dig into that a little bit more because this tweet was shared on September 3rd of 2022. Uh, and some folks had some interesting ways to I don't know, chat about this more. Looks like this tweet and the technique was actually covered in some Sector 7 blog posts and articles from some time ago. This is even 2018. 
Uh, another individual shared some other syntax. I'm curious if this will work for us. So let's see if we can run this just as well. Uh, let me go ahead and modify this line and use our old wall uh, syntax. How about that? Will this trigger? I'll maximize this again. Pseudo bash, slap this in. This should be our wall command and that does not like it. Proc self isn't going to end up being uh, usable for us. So using the dollar sign, dollar sign seem to still get the process ID of the current running process or bash in this case. That old syntax, and this is way back from what, 2013? No longer works for me at least. What else do we have here though? Uh, some more shenanigans, some good memes, some folks sharing some power off shell code. <laughs> but let's go explore what this Sector 7 article showcases here. And I don't want to drag us through this, I will admit, because there's, I don't know, some in-depth stuff here that might not be best in a short video like this. But it digs into how you could tinker and play with, you know, running memory inside of Linux. Uh, digging into, okay, temporary memory accessible in dev SHM, like shared memory and other locations here. You might be rocking GDB. You might be using the debugger to see what you could end up playing with and tracking down some assembly code and the op codes and shell codes to fire this stuff off. They use Python, I think, to play with this, uh, experimenting with what you could use with the C types and libc libraries that gets pulled in. Try to fire off some shellcode with that method, mapping the memory, going ahead and executing, putting our memory shellcode in that location, and then firing it off. Uh, and yeah, if you generate this as base64, if you end up executing that, decoding it and pasting it into Python, your shellcode runs. But really digging into that self-modifying DD process or the command here, you could do some wild stuff, as you have just seen, putting the shellcode into the current process's memory. That does some weird shenanigans. It looks like it has to be cognizant of, you know, the procedural linkage table and all this explanation. And I, I don't want to drag us through that right now because it's too smart for me. I am just a poor three head with smooth brain. Um, but it's very, very cool and very, very slick. So please, I hope you don't mind. Hey, we're taking that script kitty, pressing the I believe button. I'm like, look at this weird little wild command you could run to execute bash shellcode. Execute shellcode through bash. That's just kind of wild, in my opinion. That's just kind of crazy. That's just kind of huh, silly shenanigans, a little bit of interesting technique. It's just kind of fun. Again, serves no real purpose. You're not going to really do that all too often, I don't think. But now you know that you can. So uh, with that, <laughs> hope you enjoyed this silly little video. And uh, if you did, please do those YouTube algorithm things. You know the drill, uh, the silly same stuff that I say at the end of every video, like, comment, subscribe, etc. All the stuff that helps the YouTube algorithm. If you'd like to support the channel or me and all the stuff that we do here. There is Patreon and PayPal links in the description. And I am super duper grateful for any and all of your support. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.